So you want to give Design and Make Machinist a try. Don't have any models? Well now you do. No more excuses. So you've downloaded Design and Make Machinist and you've installed it. Now what do you do? Well now if you have a verified Design and Make account, you can go ahead and download this free pack of 21 models. It's seven unique models all given to you in the three different styles that you're used to seeing on the, in the Design and Make store. There's the A version, which is the model, just all by itself, so you can use it for like a standalone project or maybe an applique that you're going to adhere to a front of maybe your mantle in front of your fireplace. There's the B version, which is that same A model, but it's been put inside of a recessed dish, and the model doesn't peek up over the edge of the dish, so you can actually machine it into a blank like this that you'd pick up at your local hobby store or maybe even a cupboard door. And then there's the C version, which is that same thing as the B version, except for it has a hand carved look, very rustic looking, perfect to add that special touch to one of your projects. Now, to kind of give you an idea how easy Design and Make Machinist is to use, we were gonna take you through a project from start to finish, bringing them, installing the models, bring them into Design and Make Machinist, and actually create some tooling, and then cut the part and finish the part. Now you have to excuse my very limited finishing skills, but I did the best I could on the project. Anyway, let's see how it all kind of goes. We've already downloaded the installer and placed it somewhere so we can find it. Now we've double clicked on it to install the clip art from this pack. Let's open up Design and Make Machinist. Double click on that. We're going to go to our open model from a collection. We're going to click that and that should bring us right to our default vector clip art library. And we're going to look for the Design and Make Machinist Starter Pack. Double click on that. And if you don't see these little icons here in your window, what you can do is just drop this down and you can choose the larger or extra large icons. I usually choose the large icons. We're going to go and grab the, um, the Noel, the A version of this. And that looks exactly what we were hoping for. Let's just go ahead and change the material color to be a light sort of maple color. Next. We're going to go ahead now and set up our dimensions. So I know that my piece of material I have is about 65 millimeters tall. So I'm going to make this about 45. And this automatically will change all of my other dimensions because we've linked it up here. Um, we're going to use a starting point. It's going to be the middle. Our thickness of our material is 12.75. And this all looks great. And we're going to hit apply. And next. Now we're going to create a roughing tool pass. We're going to turn that on and we're going to select a tool. It's going to be our three millimeter end mill. Okay. And we're going to edit our parameters for this because some of these aren't quite right. So we're going to click that. My pass depth on my machine is about one mil and step over is fine. Uh, my feed rate should be about 10 millimeters per second and my plunge is around five for a roughing pass and machining allowance is 0.2 millimeters. We're going to use a rapid clearance gap of 0.5 and we're going to calculate that. And that looks to be what I was kind of hoping to see, so that's, that's good. Let's go next. Let's do a finishing pass. We're going to select our finishing cutter and it's going to be a 1.5 millimeter ball nose end mill. We're going to edit our parameters again. So we have a step over, that's fine plunge rate. That's all good, I guess. That looks great to me. Great. Let's calculate that. And then we're going to go ahead and go next. We're going to create a cutout pass. Now I'm going to double-sided tape this down to my table. So when I cut this out, I'm not going to worry about tabbing or leaving any material on the bottom of my my cut because uh, it'll just all be held on with the double-sided tape. So we're going to go ahead and select a three mil meter end mill. We're going to edit our parameters again. We're going to make this 10 and 5 and a pass depth of one millimeter. And we're not going to leave um, any material behind. And that looks great. And we're going to calculate that up next. And let's go ahead and just preview these. Now, if they don't look good in your preview, then there's a pretty good chance they're not going to look good on your machine. So let's just take a look and make sure these are what we expect. That's exactly what I expected from my roughing pass. Let's do our finishing pass. This is what I expected from my finishing. Now I may have used a slightly smaller 
cutter that way I could get a little more detail around these things but I think for the size of this that's going to be okay let's run our cutout pass that's exactly right so these little bits that are kind of hanging out here they're they're going to be stuck hopefully either in my material block because it's large enough or it'll be stuck to the double-sided tape on my table so I won't have to worry about it flying out when I'm cutting it that looks great so let's go next and now what we're going to do is we're going to save these off now because I've used different tools for my roughing and my finishing and my cutout then I'm going to need to save off individual tool paths for each and also my uh, post processor does not allow me to use a tool changer so I'm going to need to do this anyway so individually I'm going to save these off and once I do that I'm going to move down to my machine Okay, so, so a few things I might do different next time around. I probably would make the, the shape height a bit more on my actual model that I brought in. I'd, I'd make it a little bit bigger as well. I, I, I kind of underestimated the size of my machine, but I was kind of married to the size of material that I had. Uh, but this, this isn't so bad. Um, I did make a couple mistakes when I was changing my, my bit out of my machine. Uh, I would be a little bit more careful next time around where I touch down to reset my, my Z height on my cutter. It wasn't the same thickness as where I started, so I ended up being a little high and I kind of had to uh, go back to my zero, nudge it down, and then recut it. I did that twice to get, get the finish that I wanted. Um, oh, another thing I would have done too is I would have used a, a nice new sharp end mill when I was doing my roughing. Um, I just used the one that I had kicking around and, and that probably wasn't the best choice, so next time I'd do that a bit different. I do like the finish. It worked out pretty good. It's a bit dark, um, but the I did the pencil crayon treatment I did to the actual um, the candle at the end, it worked out quite lovely. It, it has a nice sort of uh, rustic feel about it. I definitely will use this. Overall, uh, I think it's a pretty neat little, little, little project and definitely a great use of Design and Make Machinist. Because Design and Make Machinist was made by Vectric, then these models can be used in their whole line of software that can take advantage of 3D models. VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and Aspire. So if you choose, to, to use Design and Make Machinist for a little while and you want to upgrade to maybe VCarve Desktop, then these models will just come along with you and they work perfectly fine. Also, if you decide to take a browse around our 
shop and you download a couple of models or purchase a couple models to use in Design and Make Machinist, then again, they'll come along with you as you move through the upgrade path to Aspire, which is fantastic. So keep that in mind. First and foremost, we want you to have fun with your CNC. And Design and Make Machinist is a great place to start. Whether you have your own DIY machine or you purchased a nice big machine and you just want to get an idea or a feel for how 3D work might fit into your workflow. Anyway, be safe, and I hope you have lots of fun with your CNC.